Hey everybody, Ryan, a revivalist, minister, co-founder of AwakeningTV.com. Welcome to my Periscope room. I'm going to give just a minute for the room to fill up. I am in the car, but I am not driving, so nobody has to, I'm not moving. I'm going to drive in a minute, but I'm not moving, so nobody has to rebuke me uh, and say, hey, you shouldn't be scoping while you're driving. I'm not driving, I'm just in the car. So let me know where you're joining me from. I love to greet everybody. Hey, Candace, good to see you. Hi, Apostle. I was just praying about it this morning. I feel it. Georgia, India. Wow, awesome. Sweden, come on, Jesus. Louisville, Kentucky, McAllen, Seattle, just came back from there. Orlando, Edmonton, Atlanta, Detroit, Philly, Minnesota, Virginia, UK, Brandon, Florida, Awakening Church. Love that place. Uh, Scotland, whoa, whoa, Scotland, Wisconsin, York, Pennsylvania, UK, Florida, cool shades, thank you, I love my sunglasses, uh, sunglasses and coffee are two key ingredients to the anointing, <laughs> Dominican Republic, Quebec, Canada, India, nice glasses, hey, Joe Dawson, good to see you, Teresa Hawkins, one of my spiritual daughters, good to see you, North Carolina, Chattanooga, Phoenix, CFTN Church, oh, I've never been there, but heard it's awesome. Welcome, welcome. Hey, do me a favor. Invite your friends into this scope, if you would. I uh, just want to share this with you. I believe it's going to be a real powerful time. 3 a.m. in Australia. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I'm coming to New Zealand and Australia this week. I leave tomorrow. So uh, check out my website, ryanlestrange.com, or my Facebook page, Hey Rosie Modesto. Detroit, love Detroit. Uh, find out all the details about where I'm going to be. I just came back from the West Coast Rumble in Seattle. My Lord, things blew up there the last night, uh, Saturday night. There was an apostolic decree. I am seeing the most interesting thing in revival right now, and this is a side note. There's this blending of the apostolic and the prophetic with the power and the glory that's happening, and these streams coming together. And I just believe it's a critical unlocking. The apostolic is pushing forward for reformation. And then uh, the uh, glory people are bringing the glory realms and all of it's flowing together. And it's really interesting what's happening. And that's what happened. Lord had me prophesy over Seattle. And I have one of my spiritual sons with me that's a prophet. So you had an apostle, a prophet working together in revival glory. And my Lord, it ripped the roof off the place. There was such an authority that came in that room. The only way I can describe it is the government of God came into the place. So I was so blessed and people were healed. The, there was a blind lady that was seeing, a deaf lady that was hearing, and all kinds of things that happened. So it was off the charts. Um, anyways, let's get into the scope and then we'll get some questions. Um, what to do when you sense the shift? Hey, Santa Barbara. But you don't have all the details. The Bible says we know in part, we prophesy in part. This is one of the challenges of being a prophetic person is you're going to be clued in to what is to come before it comes. You are a forerunner according to Luke 1.17. So you're going to get a sense of what is to come. And in your own life, you know the greatest, loudest prophetic voice in your life should be your own voice in the prayer closet. In other words, what I'm saying is you should be the primary prophetic leader in your life, that you should have a prayer realm, a Proverbs 20, 27, that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Uh, you should have this prayer realm where you're constantly tuning in and listening for instructions. And God will begin to stir you up about the shift that is to come before you have all the details. Now, here's where you'll miss it. If you just start shifting prematurely. So that sense of stirring is to get you to pray and lay hold on the shift that is to come. Uh, Johnny Inlow just released a word about the month of May and people shifting in May. It's a long word. I think it's on Facebook. You can find it. But I feel like it's a really accurate word to what is to come. So what to do when you don't have all the details? Let's talk about some very simple things, okay? One of the first things you do is you be faithful in the little things. I see so many people, they, they get a vision of stadium crusades and they quit helping in the local ministry. They quit doing the little things because they want to go do the big things. If you can't be faithful with the little things, God's not going to trust you with the big. So just because you have a picture of something that is to come doesn't mean that you're just supposed to go quit everything you're doing right now. Be faithful in the little things. I know of nobody 
body that's been promoted to a national or international platform that was not faithful in the little things. I want to prophesy and say there are some people in the background, some ushers, some ministry of health people that are going to get some massive promotion during this season of shift that we're in because they've been faithful in the little things. Now, there are some people that are going to stay in that realm because that's their call. There really are no little things in God. See, there's really no thing God ever asks you to do that's little. They're all significant. And we need the helps and we need the governments. But sometimes God will train fivefold gifts through those helps and governments and then raise them up. So be faithful in little things. Until you know what is next, do what is present. Let me say that again. Until you know what is next, do what is present. Okay? Secondly, go back to your prayer journal. Go back to the prophetic nuggets you have because there's prophetic indicators for where you're going and what God already said to you. So a lot of times in the middle of a shifting season, the enemy will release a spirit of confusion and he puts all these different things in front of you. It's like you go, you go. I don't know if I'm supposed to go here or go there or go there. Whatever you're going to do for God, it's already been decreed to you. You've had dreams about it, but sometimes you're not properly interpreting the dreams. So if you go back to what the Lord has already said, you can start to get the pieces of the puzzle, okay? That's critical. Thirdly, uh, reach out to proven voices in your life. So this is where spiritual alignments and relationships are so key. And I think a lot of times when you're about to shift gears, the Lord will increase the intensity of your alignments or he'll even bring some new alignments. But sometimes you need people that can see something you can't see. So reach out to them and say, look, I'm sensing this shift, but I don't have all the details. Do you have any pieces of the puzzle? Do you sense anything? That That's another uh, critical key. And, and, and then... Get into the glory realm of worship. Just get into worship. In His presence, clarity comes. In His presence, direction comes. There's an interesting story about David. I wrote about it in the new book of mine that's coming out in September. David is in Ziklag. Everything is defeated. Everything is broken. He has no idea what to do. And the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. I believe David went into a realm of worship because David was such a worshiper. And then he seeks the Lord. Lord, what am I to do? And the word of the Lord comes to him. You shall recover all. Clarity comes in worship. Definition comes in worship. In the midst of the glory, the word of the Lord comes forth. So when you don't know what to do, just keep worshiping. Just keep spending time in the glory. Keep spending time in the presence and the voice of the Lord will speak from the midst of the glory. Now, a lot of people are afraid. Well, what if I just sit here too long? One of the worst things you could do when you sense a shift is to move before you have clear direction. Because if you move before you have clear direction, you may move in the wrong place. You may move with the wrong people. It's in the middle of that shifting season, the enemy will work overtime to get you to make the wrong shift. The wrong shift is worse than no shift. You don't want to make the wrong shift. You want to make the right shift. And the Bible said with faith and patience, you will inherit the promise of God. Okay? With faith and patience. Patience means standing. So some of you are getting ready to shift. You don't know where. You don't know when. You don't know with who. And you have to just stand. And you keep on standing and God will speak to you. Amen? So you don't want to get out in the wrong timing or the wrong place. Amen? So those are some things that I believe will help you. Now I want to pause and take questions. If you have any questions, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thanks for inviting your friends. I appreciate it. Please check out my website, ryanlestrange.com. shows you where I'm going to be. I have lots of things coming up. And also go to my Facebook. It has the uh, events on there as well. Someone says, thank you, Ryan. You're welcome. You're awesome. Key, have others to help you see. Yes, you need some people in your life that see what you can't see. Blessings from Seattle. Must replay. Good word. Any questions? Seeking a gift for guidance in Atlanta. Call the prophetic. <coughs> Seeking God for guidance in Atlanta. Well, Father, I just thank you for guidance for my brother in Atlanta in the name of Jesus. I pray for direction. And I just sense the Lord saying, dear brother, that there were some false friendships and some false relationships that came around you and then they faltered. Their motivation wasn't pure. Their motivation wasn't right. And I sense the word of the Lord saying they were actually sent to derail and distract from purpose. So I pray for right alignments for you in Atlanta in the name of Jesus. And I take authority over wrong alignments and false 
Pastor Salinas, and I pray for the wisdom of the Lord and the direction of the Holy Spirit. I pray that, that, that where one brook has dried up, the Lord will release you to the right brook. I just sense a divine shift for you in the name of Jesus, and I just thank you for it right now. Gwen, I need direction. Lord, thank you for direction for Gwen in the name of Jesus. When are you coming to California? I was in California, and uh, they want me to come back, but I am trying to find the time to come back. Guidance for my new job. Father, I thank you for direction, guidance. Seeking direction. Lord, I thank you for direction. Praying for revelation. For Rebecca, I thank you for revelation in Jesus' name. I experienced a major shift last year, but need seeking direction. Lord, thank you for all these people that need direction, need clarity. I bind the spirit of confusion. You've not given us confusion, but you've given us a sound mind. And I thank you for the mind of the spirit in every person on this scope right now. In Jesus' name, I take authority over confusion, and I thank you for direction in Jesus' name. Amen. New to the prophetic, need direction. One of the greatest things I'd say about the prophetic is get some training. There's tons of good books. James Gall has good books. I have a book called Releasing the Prophetic. Jennifer LeClaire has a book, The Heart of the Prophet. There's just a lot, a lot of good things. Uh, get those things, and they'll help give you guidance because the prophetic can be such a powerful tool in your life. I have a lot of dreams of me helping, encouraging children in distress. What does it mean? It means you're called to help children in distress. So you've just got to pray about when, where, and how. I was recently healed, but I don't have the physical manifestation yet. Well, keep praising God for what you don't see. That's the perfect definition of faith. What do you say to someone that's going through deliverance? I say, praise your way out. Is it too late to come out of wrong alignments? It's never too late. Apostle, will you be in the Detroit area any time this year? Not that I know of. How do you know you've been called a pastor? Well, you'll have a sense of it, and it should be confirmed by other people. Bishop Hammond wrote books on the prophetic. He did. I should have mentioned him. Fantastic books. Wow, Jesus' direction will give you right alignments. Holy Ghost said after you prayed of confusion. Awesome. Pray for Santa Barbara for a revival. Oh, yeah, Lord. I thank you for a blazing revival in Santa Barbara in the name of Jesus. I saw that California coming into its season of glory, and the Lord said it was called to be a state of innovation. Would you come to Kansas if invited? I would. Absolutely. How does one get free from masturbation? Well, you've got to renew your mind. And uh, you've got to really put the right things. You've got to close any door if you're single, especially. You just can't watch anything, even on television, that stirs up lust in your heart. Uh, because if you feed a stray cat, it's going to stick around. And so watching uh, television shows that are not rated X or rated R can stir up that lust. And then it takes a lot of discipline uh, and a lot of resisting. Uh, you got to resist and resist and resist. You know, God made every person to, to be sexual, uh, but he put it in the boundaries of marriage. So uh, we've got to really fight when we're single uh, because it, it can be really tough. Fasting and praying can destroy masturbation. I agree. Uh, it's, it's something that single people wrestle with. And I've seen married people. It's one of the dangers of it. Married people can get so much uh, used to that that they go to that instead of uh, sex with their spouse and it becomes an intimacy breaker and blocker. So it can really be a destructive thing. Pray for me, the Lord, to give me grace to fast. Amen. I agree in Jesus' name. Pray for me. I'm up against high levels of witchcraft. Lord, I bind the spirit of witchcraft off that person in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this writer. I thank you for wisdom as they write in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Am I in the right alignment? What are the indicators? Well, you, you need to have a word about it. You need to know you're supposed to be there. It should bring life to you. It should bring strength to you. Yeah, a good alignment will also bring correction because you're not going to get where you're going without some correction. And healthy, some people just want alignments that only encourage. But part of encouragement is sometimes correction. Amen. So guys, again, thanks for joining me. Check out my website, ryanlestrange.com. A lot of you are looking for apostolic alignments. We have uh, a, an apostolic fellowship that you can become a part of and really join forces there. The information is on my website. Check out my Facebook as well. I appreciate you guys. You're awesome. God has good plans for you. And you just keep standing and being faithful in what the Lord has for you to do. Amen. Blessings, everybody.